So uh, here I am with my trusty LX6 1991 telescope. Beautiful piece of kit, uh, well past its um, uh, standard date of use really now, 30 years old, but it still does the job for astrophotography. Um, I've been using my beautiful D80 Nikon, which is uh, fixing straight onto the scope here, um, which is fine for really uh, high magnification stuff, but if you want uh, wide field images, it's um, far, far too, uh, the focal length is far too, too high. I think even with this focal reducer on, it's 1.4 meters, which is well over the top. So I was using my lovely D60 camera and piggybacking it on the top of the telescope, which as you, I'm sure you know, is when you fit, um, you fit it on top of the scope and use it as a, a, a drive to control the camera. It's nothing to do with the scope at all. The scope is there just to support the camera. Uh, and that allows you to use the focal length of the of the lens. Um, this stopped talking to my laptop, so it, the D60 just stopped stopped working one day. So I rushed out onto eBay and bought a D70, which was first introduced in 2004. Uh, I originally thought that because it's a D70, it must be later than the D60, but that was a mistake. But it only cost me £28. Um, I was trying to get the um, the uh, elephant's trunk in IC 1396, I think, which needs a, a real wide angle uh, setting. You need a um, um, smaller focal length for that. Uh, I didn't have a, 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 a suitable lens in the sort of two to three hundred millimeter range, but I do have a beautiful macro Sigma f 2.8, uh, full one to one macro lens, which is a beautiful thing and focuses at affinity as well. I also have a two times converter. Uh, this is 90, no it's not, it's 110 mil. so putting this on here as well you get 220 millimeters, um, which is just about right to capture the whole of the nebula. But what I really want to do is capture the uh, elephant's trunk within it. Um, originally I did have a sort of DIY system for strapping on top of the telescope, uh, which I'll, I'll show you shortly. Uh, that was not at all suitable. I mean suboptimal is alright, but this was really suboptimal. So in the end I did have to buy the proper Celestron piece, which was well worth the whatever I paid for it, 25 pounds or something. Anyway, that really does the job, allows you to completely bolt it on uh, and well worth it. Um, so what's the problem with the D70? Uh, it's grainy because it's early technology. And of course grain is the sort of main enemy um, in astrophotography. The other thing is the miniature screen on the back, 1.8 inches, which was fantastic back in the day, but it's really pretty much unusable. But luckily you can connect these to the, um, to the laptop with a, a simple cable, so able to get beyond that. It's limited to 1600 ASA as well, which is another uh, problem. Uh, after I bought it, I realized of course I needed to buy batteries for it and Look at these super old memory cards. Lovely, so I had to pay extra for those. But for about £50, I got myself completely set up. Because it was a cheap camera, I took a chance and modified it, taking out the IR block filter, and amazingly it worked. So it now is a full modded, a bare modification. There's no other glass in there at all. And that gives you about four times the amount of hydrogen alpha, which is perfect for the um, elephant's trunk. So. I'll now show you uh, what I did with it and the final result. Oh, just a couple of other points I forgot to mention with the uh, the setup. Um, the tape here just holds the uh, uh, focus ring in place once you set up so that uh, it doesn't slip out. That seemed to do the job. And this, in case you're wondering, um, is for triggering or to help trigger the shutter release. Because if you're above 30 seconds, uh, you can't uh, trigger it with the laptop. I don't believe, I don't think there's any way to do that, or if there is a way, I don't know how to do it. Um, so you have to use a, a, a remote control release like this. Uh, and uh, rather than stand next to the telescope, which makes it wobble and it's freezing cold out there, um, I can operate it from just inside the house, leaning outside the door. Um, but uh, unless you're pointing at the sensor, it doesn't work. So with a bit of messing about, you can set it up however the telescope is, uh, is, is aligned, such that uh, the, the beam bounce off the, bounces off the silver paper and uh, triggers 
the shutter release and it works really well. Here's the DIY piggyback setup that I said I'd show you. It's not a thing of beauty is it? Lots of tape and foam. Uh, it did support the camera and the lens but I'm not sure it would have worked once it was put to the proper test pointing straight up at the nebula. I think it perhaps would have um, let me down there so but anyway there was never a clear enough night to use it which is probably the universe doing me a favour there so uh, it probably wouldn't have ended well much better to have the proper attachment the Celestron attachment there it is so there's the camera and lens nicely piggybacked on top of the scope um, and uh, did a beautiful job so I took in the end um, two and a half hours worth of data taking 50 shots at two and a half minutes each which is quite a long um, long exposure considering the the mount is really suboptimal on this um, scope uh, the reason being that it was it, the, the nebula is near the zenith so you get um, very little movement very little rotation compared to something uh, near the horizon um, the good quality lens uh, uh, the SV Boney uh, ultra high contrast filter just tucked in nicely inside there um, so that captures uh, the O3 and uh, hydrogen alpha line which is what we're looking for and now I show you some JPEGs from uh, of the two and a half minute captures obviously I use RAW for the, the final processing but these JPEGs were taken alongside it just as reference you might struggle to see the nebula at all as indeed I did when I was taking it you can just see something towards the bottom but it's really not impressive and the sky was still a little bit uh, light I, I began to think that uh, I wasn't going to get anything at all but uh, in the end it turned out um, not too bad as you'll see so then I took my flats um, to, to remove all the imperfections and problems across the field here's an example of a, a single one of those you can see all kinds of dust and stuff in there because of the bare modification that I did on the camera and there's the final that came out of the deep sky stacker um, you can see the nebula it's not really very good at the moment but with a bit of processing uh, you can pull a lot out of it I use Starnet which is a fantastic uh, piece of free software which allows you to take out the stars or take out the nebula and process the two parts separately so that was the stars processed and that was what I used that's the nebula with the stars removed and there's the uh, final image with lots of extra light bursting into the camera at the top left I don't know why that was um, but not a bad uh, not a bad result considering you can at least see some some detail in that but what we're looking for is the elephant's trunk and there it is compared with the Hubble image it doesn't compare well I'll admit that but you can see it and that's something and there's a surprising amount of comparable detail there as well uh, if we overlay one with the other you'll see so yeah it's not great um, and not only is my equipment suboptimal but my capture was suboptimal as well two and a half hours is nowhere near enough to capture something uh, like the elephant's trunk properly so there's plenty of room for improvement uh, skies were as I say were not ideal so there's more to be done there but this was my first attempt at doing something like this it is an old camera um, but I think with a, with a better night and a bit more dedication staying up beyond the two and a half hours of, of data collection there's a much better image to be taken there and the D70 with the um, macro lens can do a perfectly decent job thanks for watching